The PlayStation 2, particularly the FAT model, I personally really love this thing. I got so many good memories with it. I have, oh man, I have burned so many hours playing this thing and I never regret it because they had some amazing games like Tech and Tech, Ridge Racer 5, SSX, Your, the list is absolutely crazy. But I did get a lot of questions in the last couple of, let's say, months that people were asking, can we even like play or emulate PlayStation 2 on a certain game box? Particularly when you're looking into the cheap stuff that I mostly review. Yeah, and there we do have like a very big issue because we have so many different game boxes. I completely understand the question people are asking me because, yeah, there are so many ways you can play nowadays. But let's talk about the jungle of game boxes because a lot of you were asking me like which one can even play PlayStation 2 and I can tell you to make the answer short none of them can. We have like the Super Console X, the Pauki box and all the other brands like the PlayStation 5 weird ones, the Teleport, Magic Box, the X game system, the list goes on and on and on. But these things are based basically on low end like chips. Basically the chip we're going to briefly talk about in this video, but what you're basically going to get are like the same boxes in a different kind of a variation when it comes to different kinds of software, but the chips are mostly the same and they are not capable of running PlayStation 2. By the way, like some of them are not even having the option because the emulator is not even supported by the chipset. So the long story short is that when it comes to cheap boxes, we're not going to get any PlayStation 2 emulation, unfortunate. So there was no cheap way. What is actually a game box? A game box is nothing more than an Android box. And for the people who are thinking, what is an Android box? An Android box is basically like a PCB inside a case that runs on Android. Android is an operating system that gives you the possibility to basically like watch on Netflix and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So nevertheless, just what you're going to get is actually like an Android box that they have modified in some kind of a way. We're also going to talk about in this video about the modification because they did some interesting things lately. So basically an Android box is the similar thing that you can find in your smart TV. It's more like a piece of equipment that you can pick up and hook up to a monitor and just have like new functionalities. It will basically is your gateway for basically like going into Netflix, Amazon Prime and stuff like that. And also like on your phone, your Android phone, you can and download and play games. And also you can download emulators and play retro games. There are basically like so many different ways to go to. When it comes to the Android boxes, there we have like a lot of significant differences when it comes to the quality, the speed and everything that comes with it. But nevertheless, the Chinese are actually reusing these boxes in different kind of ways. But in short, that is what an Android box is, what you normally can do with it. But let's get into the MULEC, what this means and what it is. But are there any ready to go kits or game box kits out there that actually can play PlayStation 2? Yeah, so already mentioned like the cheap ones you're seeing over here are not like having the option to play PlayStation 2. And even if they had the option, they're not like powerful enough. But there are some mini PCs nowadays that we have like the option to play PlayStation 2 Portable. I think consideration if you want to get yourself your hands on these things. Yeah, you need to build it yourself or you need to get yourself like a complete kit like with a fancy box. But you're going to pay like a premium price for it. And that is unfortunately something that is in my opinion inevitable when you're going to get yourself a kit from AliExpress or wherever you want to buy these things. Improved game boxes. Yeah, they're actually like game boxes that were like improved by a manufacturer. So they did some modifications when it's to these boxes. They basically like removed the original shell or case that had like a lot of problem with heat and they just created something new. And in my opinion, quite exciting, making this thing just better. But unfortunate, all of these things run on the same kind of chipset. And yeah, what I said before, none of them will play PlayStation 2. So that is also a little bit of a bummer that they didn't have like an improved version that actually can play PlayStation 2, at least like having chipset on the market because there we're going to get like the biggest issue. The best game box for PlayStation 2 emulation. I already mentioned like none of these will run eventually like PlayStation 2. But there are some manufacturers who are basically putting kits together that have the option to play PlayStation 2. These machines will not run at all, like the X3 that I've like talked about in the previous videos is more powerful than the first one, but unfortunate it has no option for PlayStation 2. It does have a Dreamcast and Sega Saturn, and even the GT King, uh, even if you can even like install Ether SX2 on it, because as the emulator is running on, it will not run very well at all. But I just want to point out that these boxes are still capable of running all kinds of stuff up to PlayStation 1 slash Dreamcast, so I think it's still pretty damn cool. So basically, we need to have ourselves a mini PC, or we need to get into the mini PCs. 
The reason why is because we have like so many secondhand mini PCs. They are like dirty cheap, depending where you live and where you need to buy it. And of course, what you're going to buy. Because we have all kinds of AMD, but also Intel, tiny machines that are like pretty damn powerful. And most of these like cheap machines are like so powerful that it can run even more than your typical, let's say, GT King Android box. Of course, it's just a different kind of machine, a different kind of platform or basic chipset. And even if it's older, it's just freaking more powerful than your typical Android box. And I think it gives such more potential when it comes to PlayStation 2 emulation. And I think a lot of you will know this. But in the end, it's quite difficult to recommend a certain system because the things I can find over here, sometimes dirty cheap, can be very, very difficult to find in different countries. But I've noticed like also when it comes to the CPU, GPU combination and the way how old the machine is, it also like affects the way how PlayStation 2 emulation works. Yeah, mini PCs are like super convenient in combination with Bodas Hera. It's absolutely crazy what you can do with these machines. Also, some of the machines can be bought and brand new, but also complete with a kit. But let's talk about that. Of course, we also have like a new thing we can pick up from AliExpress for cheap. That is something I personally really love. So these mini PCs are also known by the Intel Celeron G series. We have like the 3000, we have the 4, 5000, all kinds of versions. Of course, they will all come with their own price tag. I've picked up, let's say, the cheap one, but I can tell you buying a cheap one like the G3455, it was not like a good thing. And I mean, like, it was a great machine for basically emulation in general. But when you're going to get yourself like into the places to emulation, there we noticed like some chips like the Celeron is not having enough power. And that was a little bit unfortunate. So when you're opening it up, the box is very nice looking. But also when you're looking at the mini PC itself, it was made a little bit more cheaply than your typical machine. Some of them are made out like a metal, this is more like a plastic fantastic case. But it does did the job excellent when it comes to cooling. My old and also when you're looking into the PlayStation 2 port, there we're going to see where is the limit of this box. PlayStation 2 is absolutely unplayable on this. And Crash Bandicoot is not even like, say, the most demanding game of the series. So and this is like the limitation combination with Sega Saturn. But still we can play a lot of crazy, a lot of stuff with this cheap box. Another same, let's say, Celeron series is the J4115. And this UE box is pretty damn tiny, and I can tell you it's a one absolutely tiny emulation beast. Also when it comes to PlayStation 2, this thing is like super cute, tiny, and it has so much to offer. And again, you can see like we have the Celeron, it's not like the best performance, we still have like native resolution, but this thing has the option to play a couple of those PlayStation 2 games. We have a lot of struggles when it comes to this game. So at first just playing the game, you get quite a stable frame rate, but later on in the game you will see it will basically dips down and kills all the fun playing the games with this box. But let's get into some positive vibe because there are actually some ready to go kits that you can pick up like this Super Console X Supreme. So it's basically like this very nice looking metal mini PC. This is just next level but also in the price because where you have like the previous one were like dirty cheap. This one is just absolutely expensive. It's an Intel Xeon, a very strange choice but it's comparable with an i7 6th generation if I recall it correctly. And this thing has so much more potential when it comes to general emulation. But also if you just want to play some PlayStation 2 on some native resolution, we do have like some great performance. And I think this kit was a little bit overpriced because you're buying basically like a PC. They added just a normal like 2 terabyte platter disk and they added some controllers. That's it. There was nothing like a fancy box whatsoever. But again, it was a very nice PC with quite a lot of power. So PlayStation 2, when it's looking at the FPS, it's quite good, but you can see already more like this has some rendering issues and I did see it before. And I'm guessing this is not because we're playing this on Bota Sera, but I think it's more like a problem with the emulator itself. And I'm hoping in the future, stuff like this and glitches will be fixed. A little bit of a bummer in my opinion, but again, it's going to get the N64 story all over and it's going to be a mixed bag all the freaking time.
Something I want to implement in this video is the DIY options, because of course you can get yourself a mini PC or buy a kit, but another thing you can do is let's do something creative. For example, having an old school laptop. I got this one for free. It's filthy. Oh boy, yeah, it was filthy as it can be. But still, this thing was quite powerful, and this Dell DOS is pretty damn awesome, because it comes with an i7, and it came with a power supply, no RAM whatsoever. I implemented this myself. I added a hard drive and some uh, some old school RAM, 8 gigabyte of laying around. And with this machine, we can play a lot of cool stuff on the go. So this thing is a really old school i7. It's one of the first generation, which you can see over here. And the clock speed is maybe not that fancy. Oh, I by the way got 16 gigabyte of DDR3 in total. It comes with a 50.6 monitor, like a normal resolution, nothing special like full HD or 4K whatsoever. Second hand price around 90 euros, 90 dollars whatsoever. But we can play a lot of cool games with this. Okay, next up, PlayStation 2, and sadly not all the games run perfectly. And the main problem is just we don't have enough power for this. So take consideration two-dimensional games, same like with Sega Saturn, will run just okay and will have better performance. But in the end, it's going to be a mixed bag. Another awesome way is going full DIY with just a PC. I have this old GTX 560 Ti in combination with this old school Gigabyte mainboard. This was an i7 4th generation, the 4770 if I'm recalling it correctly. Not again, like it's a little bit newer than the laptop, but it is powerful enough to run so much cool games. So for example, if you're going to pick up like from thrift shop an old PC with an i7 in it, maybe you can buy it for a bargain price or on a flea market. Just pick it up and you can always make an emulation beast out of it. Two is playable on this old graphic card. 720p is the maximum I can get out of it. But there are some games like Dead Alive 2 that were not running very well. So I needed to lower it in resolution. So it's basically running on native resolution. We don't have like a $50, $100 like game box ready to go for PlayStation 2 emulation. We're not there yet when it comes to the technology as making this video, but I just wanted to show you what are the possibilities when you're just going to get yourself like a mini PC or you just want to get yourself like a laptop or just build yourself like a PC itself. There are like so many freaking, maybe a an, an crazy amount of like numbers of way you can do this. Unfortunately, the S905X, the X3 and the S922 are not capable of running any places to or like at least great that you can enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know what is your favorite way to play PlayStation 2 emulation or just play an original system. And it will be great to see you in the next video.